The Lord spoke to me about how this morning he wants me to speak on the subject of speaking your faith and how there's misconceptions in that and we need to know where we stand and, and how to navigate and, and how to, to do things God's way. Amen. Bible says in Hebrews chapter 10 that we are supposed to hold fast our, our profession or confession, King James says, of our faith. Um, New King James says of our hope, but there is an aspect where confessing or professing something is important. It's important to speak your faith. It is important to say what you believe. Amen. Paul, the Apostle Paul said the, the spirit of faith is this, we believe and therefore we speak. So someone who believes in Jesus Christ but never says Jesus is my Lord and Savior, then there's really not faith there. Amen. That faith must follow through with our, our a bold speaking out of what we believe. What is our confidence in God? What do we believe about God and His Word and His promises? And we, we need to speak that out. Amen. Amen. But there have been a number of uh, uh, areas where people are, have gotten into messes in their lives with all this. And I, it's just like last week talking about telling the truth is that Christians kind of are all over the map. Either some people have no idea that uh, God wants us to, that the spirit of faith, the spirit of faith is to speak things out. Amen. You can't hold it in. If I love my wife, then I'm going to speak it to her. And I'm also going to tell other people. And I'll definitely tell anybody who tries to hit on me, woman or man. I've been to enough restaurants with my wife, and my wife just, he's hitting on you. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm proud to be married. Hallelujah. Amen. So if I don't speak that out, then how is that really inside of me? The things that we speak out are things, Jesus said this in Matthew's gospel, that out of the abundance of our hearts, in other words, our inside man, out of the abundance of what's on the inside, it's going to come out. If what's on the inside is just full of, of filthy language, cursings, come on, profanity, then that's why it comes out. People, I didn't mean to say that. Well, you may not have meant to say it at that moment, but it's inside of you and it's coming out, right? It's good for us to stop and look and listen to ourselves. Amen? Amen? I've said this, and Kelly knows this, I've said it for years, you listen to someone long enough, you'll be able to locate them. I try to do that in counseling, I try to let people talk long enough until I locate them, and then I locate them, then, I'm going to, then I can minister to them. But you know what? We've got to locate ourselves. So whatever you're speaking, if you're speaking words of fear, if you're speaking, oh my goodness, I'm, you know, uh, uh, what am I going to do? There's going to be a, such a financial collapse and I'm going to be ruined. Come on, if, you, if that's inside of you, it's going, to, it's, going to, it's going to come out. But also, if there's a different thing on the inside of you. How many of you know you should have something different on the inside of you? If there's a difference on the inside of you that says, praise God, God's going to take care of me. Amen? Amen? is that if you believe, if you have enough of that inside, it's going to come out. Amen. So the, the thing, when you talk about misconceptions along this line, I have people that ask, and, and uh, for example, are, do you believe in the prosperity gospel? And I say, no, and that's what I was going to get into today. But I'd say yes and no. And we'll look at that, and we'll define that. And people say, well, do you believe in the 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 word and faith message. I say yes and no. It depends on what you're referring to. Isn't that right? Amen. Right. You, you could ask that question about anything in the Bible, and many times our answers would be yes and no. It depends on where you're coming from. Like I said, there's people all over the map, and when it comes to issues, for example, of speaking God's word, you can go to the internet. Anybody ever heard of the internet? It's some new thing that's out there now. So you can go to the internet, you can Google this, and you can, find, you can find articles and sites that are all over. 
Some of them say, man, you've got to do this. You've got to know how to speak your faith. And the others say, no, don't do that. That's error. That's, a, that's of the devil even. I mean, so people all over the place. So it's important that we understand this. It's biblical when the Bible says that we need to speak our faith. Amen. And that once again, I'm already synops- I'm giving a summary of my introduction introductory point is that uh, if you aren't speaking it out then is there really faith on the inside come on and so it's important so you can't hold it in it's going to come out if it's really on the inside and God wants us to and you know it's not just for our own sake it's also for uh, praise God for others to hear where we stand how many of you know people need to know where we stand People need to know where you stand on issues going on in our culture. What does the Bible have to say about those issues? If they don't hear you, then they will doubt what you believe and what your position is. Now, that doesn't mean that we get into people's faces. And it's important that so, so many Christians, they get so political on so many things. And I, what have I always said, church? Don't lose your testimony over politics. You got to be careful. There's so many more things you can be talking about, isn't that right? But sometimes you got to you got to speak out. Amen. Yeah. I said sometimes you got to speak out. But so speaking our faith, speaking what we believe from God's word is not just for ourselves and because it's inside of us, it's for the benefit of others to hear. How many of you know it's for the benefit of of the devil and demonic spirits? They need to know. Because they don't know. How many of you know that the enemy does not know what's inside of you? And so you got to show them. Amen. You got to tell them. Praise God. It's like, get out of the way, devil, in the name of Jesus. I'm coming through. I believe in a God, hallelujah, who does part the sea. Praise God, who does make a way in the wilderness. Amen. And I, in the name of Jesus, get out of the way. Glory to God. But also God wants to hear it. God's waiting to hear us tell him what we believe about him. Amen. Amen. Kelly loves to hear what I have to say about her all the time. (laughs) No. (laughs) She only loves to hear, she only loves to hear when it's, when it's true, but when it's lovely, when it's uplifting, come on, and it's encouraging. Amen. All of us can say things that we shouldn't say. How many of you know you need to put a guard on your mouth? Anybody here last week when you read that scripture verse? Get, oh, Lord, put a guard. Muzzle me. One scripture verse says, oh, we need to be muzzled sometimes. Well, oh, praise God. You know you're starting to have revival when you get down on your knees and you pray, God, muzzle me. I guarantee you, you make that prayer. Revival, praise God, is happening. But here we need to see that, uh, so we have the misconceptions on this side that people don't even realize how important it is to speak God's word. They don't even, they don't even know God's word. We're talking about Christians now. You've got to know God's word. You've got to speak God's word. Amen. It's just like even Jesus himself. He would say to the devil when he came to tempt him, it is written. It is written. There's so, there's so many aspects in the message primarily is not on that area because I, I know the crowd in which we talk about, but you, you realize there's people over here that don't even realize they're supposed to speak God's word. They're not supposed to speak what the world thinks. They're not even supposed to speak their own stinking thinking. They're supposed to get God's word inside of them and let it come out. Let your faith come out. Praise God. But then you can go way over here on this extreme, and that's why these misconceptions oftentimes have extremes, and people are Christians are all over the map. Is you have people that have a an extreme view about confession that they're they're so careful to say anything that they think smacks of unbelief. So we're going to hit that. Are you ready? Let's go ahead and get on into Psalm 42. Amen. And so David, how many of you know Psalms? were prophetic utterances. Anybody know that? Psalms were prophetic utterances. And psalms can be in song or they can just be in a poetic form, but they are prophetic utterances. So when David, who, who penned down most of these, is that when he spoke, he was speaking by the Holy Spirit. 
It was great to be able to see that the Holy Spirit helped him speak out things, helped him speak things and pray things, prophesy things when he was in the midst of problems. Okay? And so we need to see that. Uh, hold your place there in Psalm 42. I'm just going to be led by the Holy Spirit. Real quickly, turn over to Romans chapter 4. We're going to come back to Psalm 42. Are you okay if we just follow the Holy Spirit today? Amen. And it talks about Abraham's faith. And it says, the faith of Abraham, who is the father of us all, is how verse 16 ends. And then verse 17 says this, as it is written, I have made you a father of many nations. Now get that, God told him, I've made you this. Even though he's not a father yet. He's not even a father of one, really, of the seed, Isaac. He said, so it's written, and it says, in the presence of him, God, whom he believes. So it's talking about faith now. And it says, God, who gives life to the dead. How many of you can say, I know what he's talking about there? Hallelujah. Well, a few of you. How about the rest of you? You know what that's talking about? Praise God. God's given you life. Amen. Life to the dead. And no, no, this. And calls those things which be not as though they did. King James says, calls those things that be not as though they were. And so many have gotten into trouble, and we've preached on this because we are of the, the, the faith camp. Praise God. There's so much right, but I want you to know right now, in case you, you lest you misunderstand what our, our, church is about we don't we don't accept just everything that's said out in these areas by this preacher or that preacher or this preacher we're going to stick with the word of god amen and there's a lot of uh, of uh false things that are being taught out there even of people that we would say hey we're kind of in the same camp but on this area they're like no no you know, and, and so it's a loose network of, of ministers and, and uh, churches and believers, amen, we're all independent, praise God. And so it's important, people say, well, if you're this, that means you believe this and this and this because this preacher preached that, or this preacher preached so, no, we believe what the Bible says, regardless of if this preacher preaches it or that preacher preaches it. And so there's been a lot of preaching, when I first got into uh, hearing about it, it, the power of God's word and praise God, uh, standing on God's word, praying God's word and confessing God's word. I got uh, into a lot of extreme things. I've often said that I've kind of hit almost every extreme area and God has pulled me out of that. So I, that helps in the whole pastoral ministry, which I've been in for, well, I'm going to be next year. It'll be 40 years as a credentialed minister, but pastoring uh, 38 years. Uh, next year, so 37 years. And so uh, God enables me to help people, to shepherd people, to help people. What does a shepherd do? Here's a sheep that's gotten over into the thicket, and I have to go and rescue that sheep. Because if I don't say, well, you know, that's tough luck for that, that one. Stupid sheep. Bye-bye, the rest of the flock's going this way. No, we want to reach out and help as many people as possible. Amen? But here, here is the here is where an error has come in, is the thought that I just can't speak anything, uh, anything except for the end result. Well, we're going to see in David, he didn't do that, and David was a man of faith. So what does it say and what does it not say here? Talking about Abraham being the father of our faith, and in that, it's talking about speaking. It's talking about being like God, who calls those things to be not as though they were. He does that. He doesn't do that all the time. Okay? I said he doesn't do that all the time. But then it says, notice, calls those things which be not as though they were. There has been a tendency for people to turn Bible speaking, speaking our faith, into this. Not call those things which be not as though they were. Call something pray, out of faith and so forth. Is I'm going to go around and say what is as though it's not. There is a difference, and I want your minds to grasp this, because it's extremely important. It's a, there's a difference between calling 
what's not there yet. You haven't seen the miracle yet, and you're calling it as it is. As though, praise God, God's coming, God's coming, God's, God's doing stuff, hallelujah. But there's a difference between that and coming over here and saying, uh, no, I'm not sick, no, I'm not uh, going through bankruptcy, no, you know, my marriage isn't falling apart. I'm not going to speak that type of stuff. I, so it, that, the words of faith is calling those things, part of it is calling those things that, that are not as though they are, not calling those things, rejecting them, ignoring them, and acting like they don't exist. Did you get that? Because it's very difficult to go on any further if you don't get that point. In other words, it is a misconception to think that Bible faith is ignoring the problems around us. Well, I'm not going to speak that problem. Not even going to talk about it. And so you have people, you have people even, and I thank God, Kelly and I have been on the same page uh, along these lines for at least 35 years. Took us a year to get in, get in order. No, as far as I can remember, all the way through our marriage, it's like we understood that that's extreme and that we have to speak to one another. But I've seen couples that they won't even tell the other spouse, I'm not feeling well today. And so, because they don't have that knowledge, then we're big believers in the scripture verses, neither give the devil any place. Don't give the devil any place. You can give the devil a place in the situation if you don't give accurate information, and now they're kind of wondering, well, maybe he's mad at me. What did I do? Why, why aren't they talking? Well, it, it could just very simply be because they're not feeling well. That piece of information is so important. Why are you feeling down today? You don't tell, you don't say that I've been thinking about our bills. And I've been thinking about our financial situation. It's important for couples to talk to one another. And I've just been amazed that, that, that there are Christians that won't even talk to God and be honest. And so we have preached for years, haven't we? I've preached this for decades. Is it's important to be honest with our words. Amen. Look what David did. Now let's go back to Psalm 42. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 6. Oh my God. My soul is cast down within me. Therefore I will remember you from the land of Jordan and from the heights of Hermon, from the hill Mitzar. Deep calls unto deep at the noise of your waterfalls. All your waves and billows have gone over me. The Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and in the night his song shall be with me. You see him going back and forth with the Lord, and prophetically. Verse 9, I will say to God my rock, why have you forgotten me? Oh, I should never, for, I should never confess that. Doesn't the Bible say he'll never leave me nor forsake me? I will never speak that. Well, David did by the Holy Spirit. You know, it's interesting, these songs and and uh, I was going to share at the beginning when you're talking about peace. Is that really that song, if you go back and listen to it, and we'll have it on, on our website so you can go back and listen to it, is it, it, it actually imitates the faith journey. That's a great phrase. Somebody ought to name a church that. <laughs> faith journey. The journey of faith. Do you know you cannot even journey in faith? You cannot even get in faith if you don't understand what faith, faith is. Faith starts with admitting you have a problem. Faith will never start with denying the problem. So you see this time and time again, and of course right here, you have David talking about it prophetically, is that faith has to admit to God, I got a problem. I need a savior in this situation. You out there? Bible says in James chapter 4, it says we have not because we confess not. Do we have to turn to that? Let you know. No, many of you already know that. Verse. It doesn't say that. But that's oftentimes how too many believers, they get a little bit on faith. They, they get crazy. It's a misconception. We have not because, the Bible says, because 
we ask not. So faith begins with recognizing, I need you, Lord. And then asking. I sat under a ministry years ago, and I knew better. You know, sometimes people are younger. They know better than even people who have been Christians for years. I was just 19 years old. The pastor was preaching on faith and getting into faith a lot. Praise God for that. But then he got off into too far when he would he would he got off into this area of latching on to a, a great principle that uh, the blessings of God will follow me and overtake me Psalm 23 and he got into to the area of I don't even have to ask God and that is true to a certain extent there's things that are going to follow you and overtake you that you don't even ask you know the Bible talks about God answered prayer beyond what we could even ask or think but it got into crazy town when he was minimizing prayer. Faith cannot exist unless there's prayer. So number one, you've got to admit I've got a problem. Financial, relationship, amen, physical, problem at the workplace, problem at school. Come on. I've got to admit it, Lord, I need you. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm not God, you're God, I look to you. Number two, then you ask him. That's the petition part. Praise God. You ask him now to do something about this. And of course, in that process, don't just ask if you don't know what God's word is, is you go ahead and find out if you're not quite sure what his will is, is find out what his will is. Amen. But faith is asking, taking the time to ask. The faith journey begins with saying, as that song did, I don't want to be afraid. And I know there's a lot of faith people out there that would hear that song, I'm sure, because I, I know I've heard them say it about other songs. I would never sing that song. That song's not full of faith. That song's not in faith, and we shouldn't sing that. Because it starts out saying, I don't want to be afraid. Well, the truth is, that's part of the faith journey. Because the song got into faith. And that's what David, I don't want this. Things are a mess. And so you're admitting that, praise God. But you don't stop there. But you do start there. People have never really started in faith that they think they're in faith. How can you really be in faith if you haven't started with an honesty before God? To God, I need you. As many as call upon the Lord shall be saved. We call because we're in a mess, and we call because He is all-powerful. Amen? All-knowing, all-seeing, all-willing, all-loving. Amen? And so we ask, and so here we have, in verse 9, I will say to God, my rock, why have you forgotten me? If you feel that way, that's true. You out there? That's where you're at. I pray, Lord, I, I oftentimes pray, Lord, meet people where they're at. We will never be a church that says that God won't meet you where you're at. And God prophetically is speaking this out. Look where David said, why have you forgotten me? Why do I go mourning because of the oppression of the enemy as with a breaking of my bones? Thank you, Holy Spirit. No, he's, he's given voice to it prophetically. My enemies reproach me while they say to me all day long, where is your God? What's he saying? He's being honest. And the Holy Spirit, get this is so important, the Holy Spirit is helping him be honest. The Holy Spirit will not help you to be dishonest. The Holy Spirit will not be a part of you trying to cover up some problem. But the Bible says, I am something. There's a time to say, let the weak say I'm strong. Amen. But you've got to know how to approach a lot of people never receive anything from God because they never ask, and they never ask because they never admit their need. Thank God we want to be a church, hallelujah, that we see there are problems all around. God is a God who will meet our needs, amen? But then in verse 11, you see the faith journey then. The journey doesn't end then. That's just the beginning of faith. Now it has to be this. Your comments have to be this. Your thoughts have to be this. This is the case, yes, but. Write that down. Yes, but. Yes, but. Faith, faith doesn't say no and. Faith says yes, but. I have a big problem. Mama's dying. 
Yes, but what does God have to say about that? Amen? I got a bill, and what's in the checking account does not cover what, what the bill uh, is demanding. Yes, but there's something else. Praise God. God has something else to say. Amen. Faith, the faith journey is, praise God, we start with the honesty. Are you getting it now? But then it comes into looking to the Lord and saying something else. Wow, what is the yes but here with David? So he, and he did this two times here in, verse, in, in, in Psalm 42. And he says, does it again in Psalm 43. But notice this, verse 11, that is repeated earlier in Psalm 42 and then repeated again in verse 5 of, of Psalm 43. But in verse 11 to 42, why are you cast down, O my soul? And why are you disquieted within me? There's a recognition. Man, I'm bummed out. Some of us just need to be, need to be more aware of what's going on in our own lives, our own minds, our own psyches. Amen. Holy Spirit's helping David. And then prophesying that, why are you cast down, O my soul? He's cast down. In other words, you want to know the best translation of that? Pastor John's translation. Why are you bummed out? That's what he's saying. Why are you, he's stopping to think, why are you bummed out? And why have you got all quiet about everything? Then he says this, yes, but hope in God. For I shall yet praise him the help of my countenance and my God. Amen. Woo, praise God. We serve a God. Amen. We're not alone. Glory to God. A God who rescues, a God who delivers. Amen. Amen. He is El Shaddai, the almighty God, the all-sufficient God. Praise God. He is Jehovah. He is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. He's the God who provides. He's Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Hallelujah. He is the God who comes on the scene. Woo, hallelujah. You talk about peace? God is Jehovah Shalom. He is my peace. Amen. Why do we need God to be our peace? Because we lack peace so many times. And it's not a sin to be there. You know what's a, what really is a sin? It, it's more sadness, but it does start getting into sin, is if you choose to stay there. You don't need to stay there when there's God who's willing to do something about the situation. But we need to be yes, but people. Amen? Turn over to the book of Habakkuk. We, we find another passage. We, I think we only have enough time for this. Are you getting anything? So we find right after the book of, you see, where's Habakkuk? Genesis, Exodus, Nahum. Habakkuk. Does that help? <laughs> Habakkuk. Now, this is so important. Habakkuk is, is just another of many, many examples we can look at. But Habakkuk chapter 3, there's just three chapters in the book of Habakkuk. How many of you know Habakkuk was a prophet? And he is being inspired by the Holy Spirit to speak things out. Amen. Isn't that what we believe about the authority of God's word? Of course. And he says in verse 17, if you're there, say amen. amen. If you need to go to the table of contents, that's what they're there for. Verse 17, if you know anything about the book of Habakkuk, great book to read. Habakkuk is crying out to God and he is complaining to God. Do you know it's okay to complain to God? Don't try to rebuke God. That, that definitely crosses the line. But to complain, in other words, Lord, why? He said, why? He said, why are the people of God being, being persecuted and, and uh, the people, the, the nation of Babylon, which is the case there, has come in, a, a nation, an ungodly nation has come and defeated. Why, why are you allowing this to happen? That just doesn't seem right. So you can say he's kind of complaining. He's kind of complaining in a way that he's wanting God to respond to him and God does respond to him. Amen. This isn't the same as complaining and murmuring as the children of Israel did. And many of them died as a result of that. Okay. But it's okay to be able to, to Lord, uh, I don't understand what's going on. Why is this happening? Why is this? You could even say, have you ever felt this way? Why does this keep happening? So the faith journey begins with honest exclamations of that. But notice how it ends. So it's all a, uh, it's all Venting that, God speaks to him. 
He gives them answers. Habakkuk gets the revelation. And what is the revelation? Yes, but. This is true, but. So look how he ended this. A great passage in verse 17. And he got the revelation, so he spoke it out by the Spirit. Though the fig tree may not blossom. There's times the fig tree won't blossom. Nor fruit be on the vines. Though the labor of the olive may fail and the fields yield no food. Agricultural community, mostly at that time. So that's serious if everything's falling apart there. Do you get that? So though this is happening, and then he goes on, though the flock may be cut off from the field, either cut off by raiders coming in and taking the flock, maybe them dying as a result, but just cut off for maybe several different possible reasons, and there be no herd in the stalls. Not only our crops now, but now also our our livestock. He says this in verse 18. It's the yes, but. He said, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Get this, in the God of my salvation. What is he saying there? You'll miss it if you don't understand when he says the God of my salvation, he is the God who comes on the scene and turns things around. Yeah. And though all this thing is happening, I serve a God who turns things around. Yes, but, amen. And it says the Lord, Jehovah God, Elohim, is my strength. He will make my feet like deer's feet. And he will make me walk on my high hills. Now, I wish, and we'll probably get a little bit further in this maybe in a couple weeks, talking about perseverance in prayer. There's great misconception when it comes to faith. Some people think, okay, you're going to speak your faith, and when I finally get to that point, then I need to call the thing as done. That's the only way to speak it. You know what? We try to encourage people, you know, when you pray, pray God's working a miracle in this area. God's on the move. Amen. And we'll look at scripture verses. That sometimes we go overboard and we say it's already done. And we cause confusion with our own mind, with other people. Next, no, no, it's already done. Is it already done? We'll look even at Mark eleven twenty four. We're supposed to we're supposed to keep on believing that we are receiving. Amen. So you hold on to that thought when we come back to that even further, you get even more biblical grounding in you. It's, it's like the woman caught, with the, you know, caught up and had the issue of blood, the, the problems of the, the female hemorrhaging and fem- for years. And she said, I'm going to go and I'm going to touch the hem of his garment, Jesus' garment, and I shall be healed. So many people say, I'm already healed. Well, have you prayed yet? Well, I don't need to pray because the promises of God. Well, wait a second. I know some of you have not ever heard anything like this. You know what? You still got to pray. Well, I don't even need to pray for peace. Wait a second. Paul, in every single one of his letters, every single one, he said, grace and peace be to you. He didn't say grace and peace are already yours. Sometimes we say, I've got favor. I got grace. Did you ask for favor? We have not because we ask not. When you talk about, see, there are things through the promises of God that are available, but we need, to, we need to ask and accept them by faith. Amen? And when we do, praise God, what happens? What happens is we believe a miracle is happening. When I touch the hem of his garment, there's nothing wrong with saying, I, I, I'm going to be healed of that when I go down to prayer. Amen? Amen. Or that nothing has changed yet. You say nothing has changed yet. But I'm believing God that the miracle working power of God is inside of me. Amen. You go out and so oftentimes we have, you have done great disservice. I know some of you don't understand this yet. You keep listening, you keep feeding on the word, you'll get it eventually. But a lot of times people, we've done disservice and made people think that we're weird when we don't need to make them think we're weird. Hey, I'm already healed. <laughs> they say, you're crazy. I, I, I believe God. I'm all, I already got it. I'm healed. <laughs> oh, God. 
They say you haven't got it. There's nothing wrong. The profession of our faith can say, I prayed and I still don't feel well, but I've connected with God and God has heard and I believe that God is working in my body. He's bringing about, he is bringing about a cure. Amen. Amen. And so once I get, I, I apologize, we've run out of time, but we got to get more into this. The confession of things already done. We need to pray. I need to pray for that grace. I need to pray for a fresh impartation today. Pray today for your daily bread. I don't need to pray for bread. I just confess it. I already got all the things. You can claim this promise or that promise. The promises of God show that they're available. And because of Jesus Christ and his blood, they are ready for you to tap into. But you still need to, by faith, ask for them and lay a hold of them. You need to lay a hold of them. Hallelujah. And this is why so many people in confession, they never receive answers of what they're confessing because they never really stepped into true Bible faith and they're not laying a hold of it. And they can confess for days and days and days and weeks and months and even years, something in their life that's never getting anywhere. But they've never taken the true biblical steps to really lay hold. The Bible says lay hold of the promises of God. Amen. So, Pastor, I don't understand because you preach about there's the past tense of God's word and God has already done. Yes, God has done a lot through Jesus Christ. But you still have to ask that it would be a reality in my life today. Amen. Amen. G, G, do you, don't you still need to ask for forgiveness? Do you know that there are preachers today that are preaching falsely that you no longer even have to ask for, for forgiveness anymore? It's a terrible error, heresy in the church, actually. And it's in the charismatic circles and even in, quote unquote, faith circles that some are teaching this, that, that we've been forgiven of all of our past sins and present sins and future sins. Which, of course, is totally unbiblical. We have to go to God. And that's why they bend over backwards and say 1 John 1, 9 isn't for the believer today. No, if we confess our sins, he's faithful to forgive us of current sins and future sins. We have to be a repentant person if we commit sins in the future. But if we don't, we can run around and say, I'm the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. The Bible says that. Just because you say it doesn't mean it's true. Not in reality. If you're not walking in God's righteousness, in his right standing with him, amen, and right behavior, then you can quote it all you want. That doesn't mean it's automatic as a case for you. You've got to still ask, receive, lay hold of it on a daily basis. Amen? There are very few incidents where you can just say, yeah, I don't even need to pray about this. I'm just going to confess the word of God in this area. God wants us to come before him. Come before me. Ask. Amen? And realize that it's not up to us it's up to God. In other words, it's up to God to do the miracle, not us to do the miracle. Yeah. Pastor, but you, you preach on there's a miracle in your mouth, and life and death are in the power of the tongue. Yes, but you've got to see the other side of the iceberg. Amen? Amen? And so as a pastor, not coming from a pastor's viewpoint, seeing people deal with situations in their lives for years and no change. Sometimes there are things that people can be in faith and it takes years. Abraham was. But for the most part, I've always preached, haven't I, Kelly? You know, if you've gotten to a point where it's like you're beating your head against a wall, it's about time you kind of stop and say, I'm beating my head against the wall. Something must be wrong here. But what happens is people don't hear proper preaching on this and proper dividing the word of God. And then eventually they just give up and say there's nothing to any of that. And they go to a church that won't even preach any of that. There are no promises of God. Are you out there? Thank God there are promises, and they are yes and amen. But we got to admit where we're at. We need to ask, praise God, and we need to lay a hold. And what is that? That is the journey of faith. That journey of faith.